Deimos is finally playable in Rainbow Six Siege with Operation Deadly Omen, and yesterday we got the insane Year 9 cinematic as well as another cinematic showing us the backstory of Deimos, who is officially ex-Rainbow Operator Gerald Morris. Now, if you haven't seen those cinematics, I have a video on my channel right now breaking down the both of them as well as showing them both in full without commentary, so I highly recommend checking them out before watching this video, because we now have the bio of Deimos in-game which gives us more about his past, as well as picking up after the cinematics. And we're going to do something quite fun here. We're going to take a look at his bio in Rainbow Six Siege, then we're going to take a look at his bio from the older games, which has been put together by the wonderful people over at the Rainbow Six Wiki. So the first part of his little bio, of course, gives us his full name, Gerald Morris. We learned this in the cinematic. And of course, his nickname is Deimos. His organization is the Kiraz Legion, and this is his mercenary group. Of course, their base is the map layer. And with him being part of the Kiraz Legion, this means he is the first operator in Rainbow Six Siege to be a villain. He isn't part of Rainbow, he isn't part of any of the Rainbow squads, he's not even working with them. Deimos is the bad guy. You could kind of see the Nighthaven operators that way as well, although they aren't bad, and they did work with Rainbow at one time, but with Deimos, that's completely different. And I was right in my theory that we were going to get Kira's Legion operators, I just didn't think Deimos was going to be one of them. So he is 1.86 meters tall and weighs 94 kilograms, and he was born on the December 24th and is currently aged 51 and his place of birth is Birmingham, Alabama. Now let's get a bit more deeper into his in-game bio in Rainbow Six Siege and it starts off with a little quote saying, I was there when Rainbow began, I'll be there when it ends. Of course referring to the fact he was part of the original roster when the team was first formed. So the following says, Gerald Morris was born in Birmingham, Alabama. He was close to his godfather, a military veteran, who would sneak Morris off to western matinees and gun ranges. Discovering Sheriff Bass Reeves in a history book was a watershed moment for young Morris, giving him an idol for years to come. And this is sort of reflected in his menu animation as well with the whole gunslinger thing. It's pretty cool. Morris spent significant periods with the Special Forces and the ATF. A standout, he eschewed promotions to own his practical skills and completed a Master of Science in Inorganic Chemistry. His role in dismantling the redacted criminal organization made him a priority recruit for Rainbow's first iteration. As the team's demolition expert and a cornerstone Stone operator, Morris was key to his early successes. He was demoted from the team lead when he became outspoken about the operational limitations that came with government oversight. He and fellow operator Daniel Bogart were thought to be killed in Operation Redacted. And that is the operation we see in the little anime showing Deimos's backstory. And of course, we know how Daniel Bogart gets killed. It was Deimos. And then Deimos, aka Gerald, faked his death. The circumstances of that event have been called into question since Morris's capture at Emerald Plain. And of course, the capture at Emerald Plains is the other cinematic we saw, where Sam Fisher, Rook, Doc and Mira catch Morris. Next up, we have a specialist profile on Deimos from Hibana, captain of Viper Strike, and it says the following. Morris's arrival has had a toxic effect on specialist morale. Tensions are high. I believe that his capture offers us a unique opportunity, on a personal level, to define who we are, who Rainbow is, and, more pressingly, access to intel that will identify those who supported him. Nothing can be more important than that. The clock is ticking. And when she says that those who supported him, I assume she's referring to the people who extracted him from that redacted mission that he went on with Daniel Bogart, because clearly Gerald wasn't acting alone in that. There was a bigger picture, just like what Gerald said. He's going to be part of something bigger. So there's an even bigger picture outside of Deimos we haven't seen yet. I am concerned about Jordan. That's Thermite's real name. He has burdened himself with the responsibility for Rainbow's failures. Speaking frankly as his friend, it is not his cross to bear. As operators in the field, there is little we could have done differently given the circumstances we faced. This is the Deimos effect. Our trust in each other is being tested. Adding to the turmoil is an unspoken acknowledgement between operators that the man in the cell is one of the best soldiers the Rainbow program ever produced. His skill is apparent in how he moves, how he speaks, and how he thinks. Before we became aware of his terrible actions, Morris was an aspirational figure, a legend it is difficult to come to terms with. I cannot shake what he said at Emerald Plains. Rainbow is already dead. I've seen enough this past year to know that that isn't an empty threat. We have little to act on as he spends most of our interrogations in silence, and this deadlock has led some to suggest what I consider a reckless gambit. Involve Deimos in the mission against his backers. Who in their right mind would greenlight that initiative? And yet, suggesting this to him has produced our 
first instance of actionable intel? Could what we need be obtained with him in the field? An impossible choice that has split Rainbow down the middle. Now, more than ever, we need the leadership of a six. And a theory that me and my community have is that we believe that the next six will probably be Ash, aka Eliza Cohen. We now know that she is awake from her coma, as we can see in the cinematic which shows Deimos, cause she is watching him in his cell. And I definitely think unless they bring back a legacy R6 character to become director, even if that's an ex-director, the most likely candidate to become six out of any of our operators is most likely Ash, or maybe even Thermite. But I doubt Thermite since he is the leader of Red Hammer. So Ash could potentially be the next six, and it's clear that they are saying, right, we need this leadership role back. Continuing on, we may not have a clear path forward, but I remain hopeful. Because the strength of Rainbow, the strength that has always defined us, comes from our shared purpose, to do whatever it takes to protect those who need protecting. And that was Captain Habana of the Viper Strike Squad talking about this current demo situation and the fact they have him captive. Right, let's move on to his training. It says the following. He has special forces training, including unconventional warfare, direct action, counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, security force assistance, information operations, special reconnaissance, and counterproliferation. And of course, he was a part of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, known as the ATF. And of course, it mentions his Master of Science in Inorganic Chemistry at the University of New Orleans. Now, his relevant experience is really cool because it includes operations which can be found in older Rainbow Six games. So the first one is the Redacted Criminal Organization. Then we also have Operation Red Storm, Operation Mystic Tiger, Operation Zero Gambit, Operation Steel Rose, and Operation Redacted. I believe Operation Redacted is the one we've seen with him and Daniel Bogart. And as well as this, the Redacted Criminal Organization is completely new to his story, I believe. And this is going to be something we're probably going to learn more of. And as we know, this is the same criminal organization he dismantled before being picked for Rainbow. So could he actually be part of this criminal organization? And Gerald has been in this from the start, even before he joined Rainbow. And this was all just a massive plan. He's working with this criminal organization. He pretends to take them down, get himself into Rainbow, and then finally fulfill his plans. Right, let's read this final bit here, which is a note from Mira evaluating Deimos's gadget, the Death Marker. And this takes place after after Mira was shot by Deimos in the cinematic. I began this report at Hereford Military Hospital and have since relocated to my lab, which my Viper Strike squad mates have kindly upgraded into a more hospitable space. Jaeger has been especially attentive. To be honest, I'm not at my best. I lost, I should be dead. It's really nice to hear that Jaeger has been there especially, and we did hear in previous battle passes that he was also around the lab more with Mira, so it seems like Jaeger does really have a fascination with Mira. You know, it doesn't have to be like romantic, he just seems to really be fond of her. Continuing on, we recovered a probe from Emerald Plains that our analysts were able to tie to Deimos. It's called the Death Marker Tracker. Not a typical reconnaissance device, it tags an individual, allowing for pinpoint awareness of their location. Having experienced what Deimos can do firsthand, I understand the choice of the name. The Death Marker Tracker shows promise in countering an enemy executing a flanking maneuver, especially if combined with Lion's EE-1D or Jackal's Inox Model 3. A curious mechanism of the probe is to offer the enemy intel on its deployer's whereabouts. There are a few ways to justify this feature, the foremost being misinformation. Having enemies focus on a target creates a window of opportunity elsewhere. My tests verify that Vigil's ERC-7 and Mute signal disruptors are effective in disabling the signal emitted by a tagged specialist, but this disruption isn't permanent. Deactivating the ERC-7 or moving out of the jammer's influence will make the target visible again. These experiments confirm that I am lucky to have survived Emerald Plains. Had Deimos maintained superiority in numbers, his advantage would have been insurmountable. I won't waste my luck. I will be ready for the death mark tracker the next time I enter the field. And that was Mira, director of R&D, and also an operator who was on that Emerald Plains mission, talking about Deimos's death marker. And so, that was the bio of Deimos in Rainbow Six Siege. Now let's take a look at what we knew about Gerald Morris from the older games, like I said, compiled by the wonderful community over at the R6 wiki. So over there it says, born in Birmingham, Alabama, USA, his father is a retired furniture salesman and his mother is a homemaker. He had two younger sisters that both still lived in Birmingham. He was the valedictorian of his high school class and the National Merit Scholar in 1982. He attended Rice University in Houston, Texas from 
1983 to 87, where he graduated with a BS in material science and a BA in Russian literature. Morris joined the American Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, in 1988 as an agent in their explosive division. He earned a Master of Science in Inorganic Chemistry from the University of New Orleans during a leave of absence from the ATF from 1992 to 1994. His thesis, Applications of Microstress Analysis in Accelerant Identification, which you can find on the map layer, was considered to be a landmark in the forensic analysis of bomb debris. Upon return to active duty in 1995, he was assigned to the ATS International Response Team, the IRT. Since 1998, he had been on extended assignment in South Korea with the Korean Counterterrorism Task Force, the National Police 868 Unit, training them in techniques of bomb detection, bomb disposal, and post-bombing investigation. At this time, his wife and two daughters lived in Seoul, South Korea which I will make note is the same city in which he attacked the tower. In 1999, Gerald was recruited by John Clark to join Rainbow as a demolition specialist. Under the command of Domingo Chavez and alongside his fellow teammates, Gerald would fight against international terrorist threats like the Phoenix Group, an eco-terrorist cell with anarchist leanings, or a far-right group led by Nikola Gospic. During his time in Rainbow, Morris was a team player who liked his operations to run strictly by the book. His primary specialty is forensics, but he is also an expert at the setting and disarming of all types of explosive devices. Although he knew a fair amount about conducting counter-terrorist assaults from his years working with the 868 unit, in hostage situations he preferred an indirect approach. Morris liked to spend his off-duty hours with his family. In his spare time, he collected antique blues recordings and memorabilia. And with that, that is the bio of Deimos slash Gerald Morris in both Rainbow Six Siege and what has been compiled from previous games. Now I'm actually going to be playing through all the older R6 games on this channel very soon. I just have to get my exam period out of the way, but then I'm going to be able to show you all these games in full and you'll of course see Gerald Morris back in action in the older games. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the bio of Deimos, also known as Gerald Morris, and be sure to check out my other videos on Operation Deadly Omen. Be sure to drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, subscribe if you're new, and have an incredible rest of your day. I love you all, stay safe, peace.